The eyes are the windows to the soul. Or so they say. But it turns out that they say more about our ecological niche than we may care to admit. You see, whether your pupils are vertical slits, horizontal bars, or round spheres, may determine whether you belong on the top or the bottom of the food chain. This is Martin Banks, a professor of optometry at the University of California at Berkeley. And this is Gordon Love from Durham University. Together, the two of them analyzed the pupils of 214 species of land-dwelling animals. The conclusion of their study? They found a striking correlation between pupil shape and the species' ecological needs. It turns out whether your predator or prey really is in the eye of the beholder. But why is this? Well, let's talk about the family cat for a moment. You know, these fluffy little guys. You might be surprised to learn that the domestic cat has some of the most incredible eyes in the animal kingdom. Muscles located on either side of the animal's eye allow their pupils to expand and contract from narrow slits to almost completely round. In fact, a cat's pupils could expand almost 135 fold. By comparison, our human pupils could only expand by a factor of about 15. This incredible ability to control how much light is let into the eye allows cats to hunt in both complete darkness and stark daylight. The study found that slit-shaped pupils were shared with other animals who tend to hunt both day and night, and in particular with animals who tend to ambush their prey. In order for an animal to successfully ambush another creature, it has to be superb at judging distances. And this is where the slit-shaped pupil comes in handy once again. So, a bit of background. Both cats and humans use a technique known as stereopsis to judge distances. The brain compares two different images from the left eye and the right eye and through neural translation is able to tell you where things are in space. Now, smaller pupils are better at performing stereopsis, but another way to judge distances is to blur out certain aspects of your vision to focus on just one thing. Widening the pupil does this, like how increasing the aperture on a camera will keep your subject in focus while blurring out your background. But to use both of these methods at once would be impossible, right? To have both a tiny and a wide pupil at the same time? Well, not if it's slit-shaped. It makes the pupil small horizontally and tall vertically, allowing animals to predict distances with incredible accuracy. A handy skill. Though, if you take a look at a sheep's pupil, it couldn't be more different, with horizontal bars as pupils and one eye on either side of their head. Rather than having a sharp focus on one specific area, sheep and other animals that have horizontally shaped pupils such as goats have a more dull overall focus of their surroundings to keep a lookout for potential predators. This sweeping general focus of their surroundings may also help explain how sheep and goats are so sure-footed when travelling over uneven terrain. As for humans, well, that's a little more complicated. Somewhere along the evolutionary tree, we may have foregone some form of light-controlling eyes. What we were dealt instead was a set more adept to detecting colour and microfacial expressions. All of which goes to prove that old idiom. Sometimes, there really is more than beats the eye. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. I just wanted to say a very big thank you to Milo, my co-star here. Uh, just wanted to point out some other interesting facts that I found out while researching this video. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the pupil of a cuttlefish, but that's worth looking up. And uh, thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Uh, there'll be a new video every single week. So um, until next week, stay curious. <laughs>